so we are good to start okay uh, hi everyone welcome to surat nils of meetup uh, day meetup number 64 today's topic is data weave basics for beginners uh safe harbor statement both speaker and host are organizing this meetup in individual capacity we are not representing our companies here this presentation is strictly for learning purpose speaker or organizer do not hold any responsibility that same solution will work for your business requirements this presentation is not meant for any promotional activity housekeeping so uh, this session will be recorded and will be uploaded to youtube channel in next 24 hours to make it interactive you can ask the question in between and also you can ask the, your questions or queries in chat box please give us feedbacks so we can make it more better organizers jitin bafna and myself nitish jain so uh, today's speaker is uh, sonali mehta sonali uh, please take over hi one this is sonali uh, i am working as a muse of architect in uh, mostly with the greater chicago area in uh, various with the various clients i have worked so far and from last 8 years i am working in muse of a total i have 17 years of experience in it industry so uh, uh thanks for uh thanks for uh, uh giving me the opportunity for speaking for the surat meetup uh and that's a wonderful opportunity for me uh so i'm uh na so today's topic i uh, i chose for especially for beginners uh data weave is the very uh, basic concept that everybody should learn who whoever want to master or whoever want to go in new soft so uh, to help beginners uh, i would go i would like to go with the data. so in this one hour i would like to uh, i would like to go in with the very basic start with uh, date what is the what is data weave introduction to data weave i'll go with the selectors uh, descendant uh, and the various uh, operators uh, in data weave uh we'll go with the variables function flow control uh we'll see how the functions in detail uh and also the lambda map map object filter filter object uh and also how the how we can work with arrays and uh, how we can work with objects so that is the main goal of this session so i would like to close my video and i'll uh, so this this complete session is uh, hands on i have not prepared any slides i'll just share my screen and start uh, I, i would like to show you by uh, practice uh, i think that will be more helpful uh, to the beginners that is going to understand uh, data view from the scratch and they they can actually implement in the uh, in the day to day project so that's that's my overall goal for this session uh, so let's start uh, i am going to share my screen oh Uh, you able to see the screen now? Uh, yes, Sonali, we can. Okay. So yeah. Ah uh, yeah, you able to see my screen full or just ah. Uh, Yeah, like if you can make it full, will be better. It's okay. Not maximized. Mm -hmm. Um, may I know how 
I can make it bigger. Command plus. Command plus. No, that's. Oh. I think this is the max size I can have. Uh, it's option command plus. No, still it's, this is the max side. Uh, hold control and scroll up. Hold control. Mm, no. Uh, not on this page. Go to that of playground. Do Okay. Yeah, we can continue. We'll see if we are not able to see properly. Okay, fine. So yeah. let's start with the big. Uh, As you all know, we have the data view, uh, data view dot dot com. If you open the data view dot dot com, you have complete uh, complete uh, the. Con, uh, complete the website that you can learn data view and you can also try on data view with the data view playground so it's a it's a web app it's a mulesoft uh mulesoft have specialized uh, specially designed the interactive uh, for making the learning so interactive the playground is really good uh the other way you can have you can have the same uh, same panel in the bottom but in the playground just for the learning purpose we'll we'll do everything on the playground so let's first see what is uh, let's first uh, see the different uh, components of the playground and then we'll go back uh, go to the well, then we'll start with the data view so uh, First, uh, the data we, if you see here, the left pane is the input explorer where you put the payload, uh, the complete payload. Once uh, when you click on the, so you can, in the input explorer, you can add more payloads by uh, uh, adding, creating more uh, payloads. So uh, you can, you can add another payloads here. Uh, so you can have multiple payloads uh, and the same script you can uh, have with the same script you can play with the multiple payloads so that that is all in the input explorer the bottom one is the script script explorer, uh, explorer where you are going to write write the that is the dwl uh, file 
that will contain the script. Your script is in the middle section. So this is called the data view. You are writing the data view code to transform your data from one format to another. Basically, the data view is used. Now, data view is the uh, main component, main uh, component that fulfills the functionality of Mule ESB, that is data transformation. So that is uh, to fulfill that functionality, data uh, MuleSoft has established the data view functional programming language for data transformation. So uh, in uh, so the script you are going, you are writing data view will basically uh, convert the data from one format to another and you can also uh, apply some logic here also so main main.dwl you can add another script by uh, by creating a new script here so in the new script you can uh, put another code and you can call the same uh, call another script into the main script as well by uh, writing the import uh, import uh, importer statement so and uh, so middle one is the script uh, where you are going to write the script and the uh, write pane is the output pane where you can see the output of your data view code uh, which is which is applied to the uh, input payload in the top uh, top row there are four uh, links uh, that is block for blocks you go to the data view blocks the document uh, docs so that is uh, you you can go through data view uh, various data view uh, documentation tutorial is the uh, uh, the two, this is the tutorial of the data view. You can see the in the left pane, you can see the table of contents. We are going to all see almost all content. So it will be very rapid. Uh, in the explanation for each and every topic, they have given the uh, best explanation here. The script and bottom is the output. So this is output pane. So this is now, this is the tutorial uh, section and in the bottom you can see two links uh, the log viewer so if i uh, you can you can see the logs in this pane and the ape with the log function you have to use the log function to see the log and the api reference is the uh, is uh, is showing the index of all the functions of the data view core libraries. So here, the, this is like all the core, the data view libraries, which has all the functions and that you can refer from the API reference. So this is this is the summary. Uh, this is the detailed explanation of the uh, data view playground. Now we'll see uh, what is data view? So here you can see the so data view. Data view is nothing but a functional programming language that fulfills the uh, uh, functionality of data transformation for the mule. Uh, uh, for the mule, and basically it's an expression language. So data view is uh, also available in other contexts uh, like command line tools. So basically, data view allows user to easily transform uh, the transform the data from one format to another. Basically, a data view uh, data view read the data, parse the data from one format. It transform it and it writes in uh, writes the output in a which is specified in as a in the output directive. So data view basically allows the developer to focus uh, on the transformation logic instead of uh, instead of uh, just going to the specific of uh, reading, parsing, and serializing the data. So basically, when data so 
when you pass the uh, when data view receives the data basically reader reader part is uh, in the data view is reading the data now when the data is put to the reader it the data it goes through the can canonical model is basically parsing the data and then it passes to the uh, passes to the data view script so the data view script is used to generate the output so once uh, once uh, and which is in another canonical model so the last uh, so the canonical the last canonical model is uh, passing the data to the writer so writer basically writer is uh, uh, responsible to serialize the data the serial canonical output of a uh, data format so basically writer is um, canonical model serialize the data and pass it to the writer writer writes the output in the particular format uh, and uh, generates the output so this is the process data view follows um, uh, behind the scenes when you write the script when you uh, put uh, give the payload as input when you write the script and when you now, when it generates the output, you can see directly the output generated, but this is the process going on. Because it reads the data, the and it serializes the data, and it creates the output in specific uh, uh, format. So this is, uh, uh, in this process, input, you input and outputs both uh, the format input and output data both the uh, format you have to uh, specify uh, in in the script so that is the uh, that is this is the introduction of uh, data view the mind types basically when you uh, when uh, data view uh, the input and output for the both you have to specify the data format that data format uh, that data format uh, is basically uh, the specific data types that you have to mention in the input and output directives so so those these uh, types are called mind types and those uh, um, these mind types are for inputs and outputs so basically it specif mind type specifies the data format of a particular document, file, and piece of data. Uh, and also, uh, data view uses that mind type uh, in in that particular format. The data needs to be read and write. So, uh, in general, uh, the mind type is application XML, application JSON, application CSV. XML, JSON, CSV, there are other mind types like plain text, CML, Java, uh, C, uh, Java, uh, so, so many other mind types in the data view documentation is it is available in very detail. So I will suggest all of you to go through it. Really here you can see uh, So here, uh, okay. Okay, so here you can see the, uh, so in the input pane, so there is a list of data types available. You can, you, uh, you can select the type, select the type of data for input. Here it is, by default, it is selected JSON. You can change it to CS, XML, uh, JSON or DWL or in any format um, and you can you can here you can in the script you can uh, also mention the uh, input uh, data input type here I'm making it as JSON and output uh, in the output directive you can also declare the in which format uh, you want to specify the output so this is uh, this is um, 
so this is the output uh, output type and here also you can see the same uh, same data type so these are called mime types now let's see the script anatomy so this is this is very important to understand you can see the uh, here you can see the uh, this is you here you can see the three dashed lines so those are the this is called the separator just one minute i just want to minimize this Okay, so this is this is called uh, separator. Uh, above the separator, this is called the uh, header part, and below the separator, it's called the body part. So this payload dot message is the body part, and this is the separate uh, above the separator. It's a header part where you first you start with the percentile DW and the data view version. Here, the latest data view version is two point five. If you write 2.7, so uh, you or you can uh, write any any version uh, below 2.5. Here you can write the input directive where you are going to mention either uh, the mime type in which your input data is. So either uh json or xml or any any other mind type so here the data is in json so i'll uh, mention json uh, i'm in here the output uh, type uh, apart from uh, input and output directive you can define the variable uh, find the function Uh, and you can use uh, that function in the uh, in the body. So I would say uh, this will give the output uh, five. Here I have just returned the function to add two numbers, and, and I'm uh, writing here at two comma three. I'm passing the arguments, and it gives me the output. So this is the anatomy of the script. We'll see in apart from uh, this you can also call the libraries here. Uh, so data view libraries you can import here and uh, it is like import dw uh, double colon. Uh, so something like this. Uh, so you can go through the library documentation and you can find the va uh, various libraries available. Uh, for a core library, you don't write it. Uh, sometimes you write it and sometimes don't. So uh, other than the core library, you have to specifically mention the library you want to use in data view script. So, uh, so that is the uh, uh, script anatomy. Now we're going to see in detail about the uh, now we're going to see in detail. Uh, I'm just stop sharing my screen. I just want to. Mm. Okay. You able to see my screen, right? Hello everyone. You able to hear me? Uh, yes, so you can continue. If you get anything, we'll ping in the chat window. Okay, sure. Uh, yeah, sure. So this is uh, yeah. So this is the uh, so this is the script anatomy. So. Okay, so now 
uh, okay now we'll see the uh, we uh, the various data types that uh, we, data view functional programming language supports so it's uh, it's the same as uh, any other programming language i'll take it very rapidly because we have very uh, less time so i just want to uh, cover more on the in the later section so uh, the data types is number uh, so uh, suppose for this it will so just for number it will show the number uh, for string uh, numbers string is the another type then uh, boolean uh, number boolean uh, just you just uh, you can just write uh, for boolean it's So this is the Boolean. Uh, it also have the array as the type. So it's uh, like one. So this is this this array can uh, contains string and number both. So array is another type. You end the last one is I mean uh, object so object you can uh, write uh, here one you can use also the size of uh, sorry the type of uh, function to know the type of the uh, value so here it shows the string same way i can use type of here so it will show the number as a type so to know the type you can uh, use the type of function so this is about the data type uh, now we'll see the selectors so selectors are uh, are uh, of four types so the single value index multi value and descendant so we can see here uh, we can see with the example uh, we can see with the example uh, like uh, i am just taking the payload here uh, i am just changing the payload so here you can see uh, here you can see uh, the with the single value selector i would like to know the name uh, the first name here so i would i would write a dot first so it will show the first uh, name same way i would like to uh, see the last name so it will show the last name again i would like to know the age so it will uh, show the age here you just need to pass the uh, pass the key uh, for uh, key and use the single value operator uh, so second you can have the nest uh, nested value so this is so this is the uh, single value so again if i use this uh, name dot uh, first or last that is the nested value because the uh, first and last name are under the name key so this is the nested value uh, you can use also the square bracket so for that i am writing here uh, f equal to name and then I'm using here uh, key. So here I'm passing uh, instead of name key, I'm, uh, I'm in the square bracket, I'm writing the first key. So it will, uh, 
it will give uh, it will the value key and take the value of the first uh, name here and it will show in the output uh, so this is the square brackets index selector uh, so for uh, so if i i need to pass the index uh, so if i pass zero here it will show the first name and last name because so this is the first before comma this is the uh, first value in the array and this is the second key value pair so uh, index will always start with zero so whatever whoever whoever is first it will be it will have the zero index and next is one if i do one here it will show the uh, h35 so that is uh, the index uh, selector even in the index selector you can have the nested value so if i if i go zero and it will just show the uh, name kim if i go zero zero it will show the first name daniela so again indexes can be negative as well if i just pass minus one it will uh, show the last name uh, first so this is uh, so the range uh, let's take this payload uh, if I so these is this is very very basic but I'm just uh, trying to cover all the concept here so uh, this is Okay, so this is zero, the uh, one has a zero index, two has one index and three has two index. <coughs> so here if I pass payload zero, it will show one. So basically if I, so range index, uh, so if I uh, write the range zero to one, it will show one and two both. If I write uh, zero to two, it will show all the values, the same, where if i write the minus one to zero so the, it will reverse the uh, reverse the array so this is this is called range selector it has like positive range and negative range both you can use as per the uh, as per your requirement so this is uh, uh, this is the well uh, now we can see the multi-value selector um let's see let's uh, take this uh, let me take this uh, this one i'm changing the payload here so here you can see the number key is repetitive so and it is also in the nested uh, nested uh, well nested key as well so if you see here there are one two three four five number keys so at at multiple levels so if i write uh, just single value uh, and use one number key so it will show all the values of number key at the very at the first level so one two three and five if i if so this is a single value selector if i use two like it it is multi value selector so it will show one two three four and five so this is multi value selector in, and it will show the values of all the labels if i use this so it will all uh, this multi values the sorry this is the multi value selector it will show 1 2 3 and 5 so that is 
that one, two, three, and five, that is on the first level. So this is the descendant uh, selector. It, it will show all the value regardless of the label. So one, two, three, four, and five. So regardless of the labels of the key, it will show all the values related to that key in the complete payload. So this is the uh, difference between multi-value and the descendant selector. So now we'll see uh, So in the next, so this is this is about the selectors. Now we'll see. We have already seen in the. Uh, we'll see the variables, uh, functions, uh, and the flow control. So as in other uh, programming languages, the it is the same way we can define the variables, but we have to define the variables in the. Um, in the declaration section in the uh, header part we cannot define the variables in the body part so that's uh, so here i can define uh, uh, one uh, okay I'm uh, defining the variable string two, so uh, it will contain the value of the string in the payload. So here I can write string two. It will show the value hello. So this is the variable. This is called the variable. It is the same as uh, it will. It it is the same as any other programming language. Uh, the logical operators, there are uh, the same logical operators we have in other programming languages, uh, uh, like greater than, less than, greater than, equal to, less than, equal to, uh, and, not, and, or. So here I see the, uh, I'm just checking, first I'm using the size of, uh, and I'm just checking the size of the string is greater than zero or no. If it is greater than zero, it will uh, give true. Otherwise it will give false. I'm just uh, checking here size is greater than two, then it will give false. So this is a logical operator uh, equal to one. So it will give true. Uh, true. So this is, uh, this is how you can apply the logical uh, operator the various conditions, the flow control. Uh, so the same, same like other programming languages, data view also have the if, else if, and the, um, and the uh, match uh, and the switch case statement. I would say switch case word we use in uh, C language, but uh, this is here in data view, it is matching. So, well, let's see one one example of each. I'm just writing here. Uh, I'm just uh, writing here a simple example of price uh, equal to hundred. Uh, so here uh, I'm declaring one uh, one variable equal to I'm just putting the condition here. Uh, if payload price is less than zero, it is. It will show the true, else, false. Here I'm writing uh, 90. So it will show uh, true in the action. On uh, now. Here I can write oh. so here it will show the uh, it will check the uh, condition first based on the condition 
it will give the answer true or false so basically you are uh, so this is uh, this is a if else statement I, we have used in the um, to check the condition second i'm using the um, uh, secondly i'm you can have multiple else if uh, the same way we have here i can write else if uh, price greater than 100 else hold so Here I would write buy and sell. If the price is less than 100 uh, buy, if price is greater than 100 sell, else hold. So here the price is 90. I'm, uh, I'm uh, giving the price and action in the output. Uh, give the price and action in the output. So I'm just uh, writing the payload dot price. It will show the price value and action in the action variable i have defined the condition so for the condition i have used is if else statement so so the same the same thing i can write write using the uh, pattern matching so it is pattern matching is very much similar to the switch case statement so here we'll see how we can make the uh, pattern so based on the action we want to uh, get the answer so it is a, a case you have to write the case keyword and then now Second case you can write as cell. In third case, you uh, it is the default uh, else statement. So this is as per the uh, matching pattern it will give the output here the price is 90 and action is okay so here the price is 90 so it is less than 100 so it should give buy so here uh, the action okay action not found Because it's not getting the action value, it's uh, showing uh, as a hold. Uh, that's not the action. Oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, sorry, we are not <laughs> checking the action here. We are checking the price. So we have to have the price value and then uh, match, oh, sorry. Okay, let me write it again. Okay. Price. 
price match so it will get the price value okay it's getting the price 90 okay so in the action variable we are checking the uh, we are checking the uh, okay. uh, actually your previous logic was correct just to try to access action so we could do payload dot action sorry uh, you can just do control Z. The previous logic should work. No, here. Uh... One more time. One more time. Yeah. So here, just do action. Yeah. Okay. So this is. Uh, yeah, because action, we are checking the price here in the action variable. So we just, we don't need to write the payload or price. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, thanks for correcting me here. So this is uh, just, we just uh, need to write the action variable. And based on the condition, it will uh, give the output. But basically, we are matching the pattern here. So for ma uh, pattern matching, we are using the uh, case uh, keyword and the now match and the case keyword. So that is uh, the same as switch case statement. Next one is functions. We've already see the function, uh, right? We can define in the header part as a uh, fun keyword and we can write and uh, I'm just for an example, I'm writing uh, add function, which will add the value of uh, to integers so here uh, in data we you can also uh, comment the comment the code by this is for multiple uh, this is a comment uh, syntax you can uh, comment it out and you can just uh, use the use a function directly and pass the argument so it will uh, uh sorry here not so here it will give the uh, output in the output it will give the value so this is this is the same as uh this is about integer i can write uh, hello function it will print the mm, string uh, name here I can write the Okay, so this is uh, this symbol is to comment single line. So now I'm uh, just using uh, another function. So again, here you can see the output hello mule. So this is this is the function how this way you can define the function you can put the various conditions and you can reuse the same functions in the uh, function in the script. So this is uh, now we'll see. Uh, so this is about the uh, so so far we have seen the what is the uh, introduction to data view uh, what is uh, mime types uh, various types uh, script anatomy uh, uh, various uh, various types of selectors how we can use the selectors how we can 
the we have seen the variables functions and flow controls so these are the very basic and which is very much similar to the other uh, programming languages so i hope uh, you guys are all clear at this point so this is one thing i want to show you here the log viewer so if i write here uh suppose if i write here log and then in this so here you can see i have defined the function hello i have passed the argument as mu and i have used a log function which will show the output here so this is this is the uh, this is just like logging you can see the logs here but you have to use the log uh, uh, function so that that was one thing i wanted to show you so this is till now this is very much similar to the any any programming languages uh, so uh, you guys won't have any issues in till this section so now we'll see uh, lambdas so lambdas are nothing but uh, it is just uh, a, it is just another name of functions but lambdas are unnamed function so basically lambdas called anonymous functions because those are without names so suppose uh, okay so suppose here uh, in this if i uh, so in in the same same uh, if i just write like this for the same add function and i'm writing 2 plus 3 this is and i'm so i'm writing this after the so this is called lam, lambda i'm using this is anonymous function it 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 don't have any name but this it is just the syntax that you can use as a lambda and the output will be uh, the same output will be there so basically uh, lambda is nothing i mean you have the you have to pass the argument uh, so this is this is the full syntax of the lambda function instead of passing the arguments we are just writing the uh uh, uh braces here so this is so this is just like instead of uh, writing the complete uh, function with the arguments uh, you can just write like this so this is kind of short syntax uh, so this is unnamed uh, and anonymous function also you can uh, you can define uh, you can give the name to the uh, lambda function so basically um, i'm just making a change in the i'm just making a change in the function add uh, sorry uh, not the function it is a uh, lambda is a function but to give the name to lambda you need to define a variable so instead of fun keyword you have to use the variable uh, var keyword where add add equal to n comma m uh, so that is n plus m so this is the uh, this is the lambda function i am declaring in a variable so so that in that way i can use the uh, same way i have i was defining a function so add 2 3 so it will give the same output but here this one is a lambda function we have declared the lambda function here by using the var keyword 
so that is the difference between function and lambda both uh, so that is uh, so so lambda you can define in two ways either you can define them in a variable and then use it or you can define uh, like this uh, again i'm uh, again i'm just showing you because it is little bit uh, complicated so here you can write 2 plus 3 and again you have to uh, Okay, so this is this is another syntax of the lambda function. Both are both are the the way to use the lambda function. One with the variable, one with the uh, without uh, any name. So now we'll see higher order functions. So basically, higher order functions are. Uh, I mean, those are uh, higher order functions. Um, are useful when you want to pass the function as arguments to other functions or you want to return a function from another function so basically let's see the filter any we are going to see the filter in detail but this is filter is the function uh, for that i can i'm just uh, you need to pass the numbers in uh, index as the argument uh, here I am I need to declare the function and the numbers so I am creating a variable where I am uh, creating uh, like array of numbers and second I'm defining a function actually you don't need to define this function but uh, So here you can see it filters out the odd values from 1 to 10. So 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. So basically filter function removes the array item, unnecessary array item from the list. And the same way filter object function that will remove the unnecessary uh, object values from the object. So that we are going to see again uh, in the next uh, Se next section but filter function so this is so now there are here you can see we have used a filter function so there are two notations you can define the uh, any like you can use two type of notations so in fixed notation and uh, and okay so in fix and prefix notations so in fix notation instead of this one this way i can define the same thing with another way so that is now i can define the array first and then filter uh, and then n uh, number index and then uh, I am just putting a condition here. You can modify the condition. You can uh, modify and put any condition uh, you want. I can just write here. Uh, instead of this, I can just write is uh, E1 and N. So it will give the value of E1 values. Here I have uh, I have chose the E1 uh, 
numbers so it will show it will filter out the even numbers from the array so this is the infix where you infix uh, syntax so you first you use the array name then you write the filter function and then you write the condition this is infix and this is the this is called prefix where you write the filter function first and then you apply um, you add the array as an uh, as an uh, argument uh, functions argument so so this is the the notation whatever notation you are comfortable with you can use it so this is uh, now another thing uh, that is useful is to uh, the dollar sign the dollar sign which is a very convenient uh, way to use uh, use uh, instead of arguments so let uh, here I am just uh, changing the payload so I can show you the use of dollar sign. So here, so I'm just uh, actually I'm oh. here. You can see uh, in the payload I have uh, array of. Uh, array of array so id time uh, id item and price so these three values so if i uh, payload dot id okay so here you can see uh, okay first time dot uh, I want to filter the price uh, so which is uh, here you value 4 15 5 2 so I'm just uh, filtering out with the uh, I'm using the okay I'm using the cannot be compared Okay, payload filter. Uh, here I'm using the dollar sign because it is a first argument. So dollar dot price greater than four. Missing body. Okay, so here uh, I have used the dollar sign. So that is for the uh, to get the price uh, and check uh, apply the condition greater than five. So it will show the value 
uh, greater than five. So it will show this uh, second item from the array. Uh, but here, dollar sign represents the, uh, so if I, Okay, so this is uh, this is the dollar sign. Now, just one moment. So mm -hmm. where dollar sign um, gives us all the same functionality where we reference something by its name. Um, this means we can change the selectors and indexes right on the dollar sign uh, in order to query the data. So next we'll uh, We'll see uh, double dollar sign and triple dollar in uh, later in the examples. So now we'll see the uh, now we'll see the prefix and infix we have already seen, but I just want to show you the one example. One, two. Uh, I'm just taking an array here and filter n. Uh, just in okay. so here it shows the uh, it filters the value uh, greater than two from the array three four and five uh, basically this is the same as infix and prefix notations uh, you can hear this is called the infix notation because that is in middle of the line uh, that is in line and if I use the same uh, filter prior to the uh, prior to the arrays and it I, if I pass a array as an argument then it is called the uh, prefix uh, notation so that's the difference infix and prefix now in the next uh, next we will see in detail what's the uh, we'll see the distinct by and group by so distinct by is also very much similar to uh, similar to filter it will filter out the uh, 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 sorry so distinct by is basically it will uh, sorry both are not similar it's uh, it will basically remove terms from the array so i'm just uh, taking one example here distinct by uh, and you can pass the array as an argument here i am just putting the repetitive values in the array and then uh, so here you can see it removes all the duplicate values and it will uh, give the no, well, uh, it will remove the duplicate values from the array. So uh, distinct by is basically we can use to remove uh, duplicate values from the array. Uh, the same inflex and prefix notation here you can uh, with the dollar sign if you want to use with the dollar sign then you can just this and I can directly uh, write the word here distinct by and then uh, dollar sign it will uh, it will remove all the duplicate array items so that is now uh, object by field you can also remove the duplicate values and you can 
uh, so let me take this where you have the multiple uh, duplicate values in the array so let me change the payload here so here uh, i'm just changing the because uh, payload because there is no duplicate value in this page just changing the payload here you can see the order id is repeated one one the product you can see repeated now i would like to uh, use the distinct by to now remove the duplicate values also payload and this distinct by and then uh, i have to give the i have to give the argument so dollar dot again order id here i'm using the concatenation uh, operator or you can use the join by as uh, line id uh, instead of line id because line id is not repetitive i would like to use the product here you can see it's uh, here you can see that is distinct by uh, plus Distinct by and then so this is this is uh, uh, with the order id and line id here 1 1 1 2 2 3 and 2 4 so that is uh, so that is the uh, uh, you can remove duplicate objects so here uh, you can also use the uh, you can you can have this same as uh, distinct by there is a group by so we'll see uh, what is group by and how to uh, group items from arrays uh, so let's not only is uh, array string and object as well so let's see how we can use uh, same way we can use the uh, group by i'm just uh, writing the group by here i'm just uh, writing one f and then uh, i'm passing the argument in x i'm just uh, taking is even in n so here you can will group by with even and odd values uh, false means odd values and true means even values so you can use the group by uh, you can use the group by with the dollar sign i can just write with the okay, the same thing i can write with the dollar sign um, even and you can pass dollar as an argument here i am just comment so the same output you will get the only difference are using the group by function uh, in between so that is in fix notation uh, and you are using the dollar sign uh, so let's uh, you can also uh, group the items from an array uh, 
basically you can also uh, you can do that from you can use the you can group you can group by items from the string so and you can also group by items from the object let's, uh, let's quickly see one uh, so this is the this is the string example so here you can see the here i am passing the string uh, the uh, it will take the characters and it will check that it contains a e i o u so here it's showing group by the characters in a string so that is another example you can use group by an array string objects uh, so we have seen distinct by and group by now we'll see the map how we can use the map function so this this is all we are working with the arrays and uh, so now uh, so map is map is the function what uh, so map function basically it it is uh, used for the common use case like trans item in array to something else here you can uh, pass uh, array uh, you have to pass array and lambda as an argument so let's see how we can use you just just with the map function you are really, uh, using the or uh, using it to transform every item of an array to something else so let's see here i'm i'm just so map seeing i'm just uh, passing array as an argument so first uh, argument is our array second second is n in the number index and then i am just applying some uh, logic here so sorry so here uh, increment it by one that's the uh, that's the logic i have put if we, that will apply to every every item of the array so there are three items it, it is this n plus one is applied to every item in the array and the output is two three and four so this is very basic uh, basic example of map function here the same thing you can write with the dollar but uh, I just want to clarify here for uh, these there are two arguments n number and index so for use single dollar sign and this is the second argument is index we'll use double dollar sign for that so that is the use of dollar double dollar sign so uh, I'm just writing here I'm just using the infix notation first I'm uh, writing the and I'm writing the map here. First, I'm using a single dollar sign, and because this is represents number, just number. And here I want to add the index, index. Um, so I'm using double dollars. So here you can see one, three, and five. So let's let's see the output. One is the same as one because one plus index always starts with zero so index for one index will be zero so one plus zero is one for two uh, index will be one so two plus one is three and three plus two index is two so three plus two is five so that's why the result is one three and five but we have used here dollar and double dollar sign so let's uh, see another example Uh, so let's see uh, I'm just writing here 
max and mu and third one is mu so so now so this is the array i have declared now using the map i'm just writing uh, hello plus uh, just writing the string here but i have to use the concatenation operator only then it will concatenate two strings so dollar is just these values and it will concatenate with hello so this is the use of map operator or uh, sorry map uh, function mm, so this is uh, this is the map and now we can also uh, so now we'll see uh, we have seen the dollar sign uh, syntax we have seen the map function now let's see the map uh, object so what is the use of map object function so map object function is the same as map the only difference is we can remove uh, uh, we uh, so with the map object it uh, is similar to map it could be equivalent to for or for each uh, because uh, so so map is uh, map is transforming every array item into something else then map object is doing the same with the object it takes takes in the object uh, and uh, you want to uh, it changes the object value to something else so basically uh, with the map object it takes an object and a lambda uh, so all together it's a three parameter key value and index so um, so index will be always always it will be a number uh, so basically let's uh, let's see how we can uh, how we can uh, transform key value pairs into object so no so very very simple example um i i'm just taking another payload here okay i'm just uh, taking another payload First name, last name, and org. So, max new and new soft. So, here uh, we'll use a map object. So, this is uh, so. So there are uh, key value pairs. Um, I'm just uh, taking. Sorry. Payload. I'm using map object and value key, value key and index as an argument. I'm just uh, writing this. I'm just passing the key.
okay so it here i have used the upper function to uh, make it uh, make the values in uppercase but here you can uh, in the map object function it pass it takes each uh, object so value key and index and here if you remove there is no use of index so if you use in uh, if you remove index argument it's fine uh, it basically upper uh, convert the values in uppercase so this is a map object let's take another example um, the same one but i'm just uh, going to add some more values uh, here so i'm just uh, writing address which is an uh, again key value pair Uh, okay so this is uh, this is another example where we are going to use the same map object uh, map object in uh, this value key and index but here we are going to uh, I am just checking that key uh, value is string, string and I am making it upper else I am it else it's just the value. So here you can see, um, okay, so here I am just writing one more. is 50 so here you can see uh, for number it's not uh, changing the changing it to uppercase because it can't so this is this is uh, the same here you can see the street the street uh, value is the same it's not in uppercase so this is uh, so because it contains in integer so this is the uh, i mean this is how it changes the value transform the value of keys uh, and uh, apply the logic so this is how you can use the map object function um, you can also use a dollar sign so here again uh, uh, here again you can have the dollar so for value double dollar for key and for index it will be triple dollar so here if i use uh, double dollar sorry uh, here uh, for value i'm using dollar again for value i'm using uh, dollar and else just uh, again for value i'm using dollar so this is a uh, okay so this uh, i'm okay i can remove this one i can directly uh, okay so this is this is i'm the same thing i have used uh dollar and double dollar so the output is the same so transform uh, you can you can also use this one replace uh, f name with first name here you can see instead of f name it writes the first name so this is this is how you can play around uh, uh, as per your requirement and you can do the transformations of the data uh, so this is uh, so this is a uh, so one last thing i want to show you is the three uh, uh, three a uh, $3 sign so instead of uh, 
this i am just using the 3 dollar sign that is show that is that represents index and uh, so key and value again it will be only single dollar so here you can see it represents the complete object into array of items and this is uh, this is uh, with the with the index so 0 1 2 3 4 are index uh, and index values and it also shows the key and value of each uh, index so this is this is a map object now we'll so we have seen the uh, we have seen the filter we have seen the map we have seen the distinct by group by we have seen the map map object now the last one is pluck and reduce so we are doing uh, just 10 minutes above but uh, the pluck function is uh, how i mean pluck and reduce both are important when you uh, when you want to transform an object into array that you can use the pluck function but it will return array uh, it will return array so pluck is like very much similar to object like functions like filter object map object right so this is uh, pluck is function when you need to transform an object into an array it takes an takes input an object and a lambda that accept three parameters same as map object value key and index so instead of uh, so so here with the same payload if i use uh, pluck um, oh, i'm just uh, going little bit if i use pluck and payload uh, value key index and then uh, I'm just uh, okay here you can see a lot of uh, exception so I'll Okay, so here you can see the uh, output uh, that B, C, D is the value and key is A. Again, for the second index, uh, uh, value, the value is uh, key is V and the value is X, Y, Z. So this is, this is the, again, the prefix notation and infix notation you can apply. So this is the plug uh, function the reduce will reduce the reduce the i reduce the reduce will reduce the unnecessary items from the array so this is uh, uh so th this is uh, i can show you very quickly here the reduce uh sorry one two three this is the array re reduce function and I can use a double dollar sign plus dollar sign so it will add the uh, it will add the index and the number so this 
so this is total is six. Uh, it represents the item while double dollar represents the accumulator. So that is total. Uh, so this is uh, okay. So n dollar a value n or dollar two accumulated total or uh, double dollar is one. So here, so here you can see. Um, okay, I can uh, write in a different way like this one. The same array if I write like this and then reduce and then double dot uh, column oh, sorry i'm passing the arguments to one and then okay Okay, so I'm using the uh, in a other way. Sorry, I have to give the proper uh, example. Uh, so this one, uh, suppose I'm So this is uh, just okay. So uh, I'm using the reduce here Okay, so this is a uh, object. Uh, Here I am giving environment name. So, Okay, it's it's uh, so this is this is how you can use a reduce function. Uh, sorry, some error is there, but uh, this is all uh, need I need to cover in this session. So we have seen almost all the topics uh, of this tutorial, and this is the good tutorials to start with. Uh, you will have basic clar clarity of the main. Uh, most important functions of data view operators uh, and uh, 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 various operators, uh, value selectors uh, with the basics, uh, arrays, uh, string, uh, various uh, data types, uh, the MIME types, and also you can how you can uh, write the data view script. Uh, so this is good to start with, but I highly recommend the I highly recommend uh, uh, to join the Mules of Training 
uh, data view training so that will give you more advanced uh, topics and you will have pretty you will be pretty hands on with the various uh, various uh, various uh, data transformation techniques so uh, that's all for this session uh, let me know if you have any any other questions uh, for me So I'm just stop sharing my screen here.